I just want to tell you that you are very valuable and you are very unique. And that's the one thing I want to tell you. Find your true value and, and actually heal your broken heart. Find back to who you truly are. Hi and welcome to this uh, encouragement that I will have for you today. I just wanted to, to have an encouragement for you today too. Uh, and the last uh, two weeks I, I have been talking about a subject actually about uh, this, uh, this heading I have called God is not your enemy. Uh, and that's something that is really on my heart to tell people that God is not angry with you. God is not angry at you. He is not after you to, to punish you. He is not after you to find all, all fault that you have done, all sin that you have done since you, since you were like five years old or something like that. And he's not after you to, to find fault with you. Many, many people they have a picture of God that God is, is angry, he is, uh, he's ticked off, uh, he doesn't like you uh, because you sin too much. Uh, and many people they have this wrong picture of God. And many times we have this wrong, uh, and when we have this wrong picture of God, we also start to do those things because we are created in the image of God. It says in the Bible that we are created in the image of God. And if we start to believe that God is in a certain way, we will start to act in a certain way. We will try to, you know, we have this saying, I want to be more like Jesus and I want to be more like God. And, 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 and sure, we, we want to do that. But, but if we believe the wrong thing about God, we ref re reflect God in a wrong way. That's why it's so important to know who God is. If we believe that God is angry, if we believe that God is our enemy, so the heading for what I'm going to share with you today is that God is not your enemy, or, or who is your, uh, that's the main heading, God is not your enemy, but who is your true enemy? We need to see that, who is the true enemy? Your true enemy is not God. And you know, if you have this picture that God is your enemy, you will, you will be, be hostile against other people. You, you will be angry at other people. If you, if, you, if you think that God is ticked off by every, every sin you do, you will start to get angry at other people when they are doing sins. When they do sin you, you will get angry. Um, because you will reflect that, that God you believe in. If you believe in the, in the wrong picture of God, you will reflect that, you will act that out. And that's why. I really want to tell you who God is. And in the Bible it says that God is love. God is love. And we need to meditate on that. We need to, to think about that. <laughs> and renew our minds around that. That God is love. He is forgiving. He has forgiven us all our sins already. The Bible actually says that. He has already forgiven you all your sins. He has reconciled the world to himself. In Jesus Christ, he reconciled the world to himself and he, he doesn't uh, hold their trespasses against them anymore. God is not ticked off, he's not holding up your sins, he's not, he, he doesn't keep no record of wrong. If you really want to know who God is, study about love in the Bible. Study uh, 1 Corinthians 13 where it says, talk about love, love. He says, talking about that love is patient, love is kind, love keeps no record of wrong. And think about that. Love keeps no record of wrong. It doesn't, it doesn't write down every wrong things you have done from you are five years old. No, he doesn't do that. It keeps no record of wrong. And even in Psalms it says that as, as, as far as, as the east is from the west, so, uh, so uh, far away, is our uh, transgressions, is our sins. He has taken them away. That's the good news. God has taken your sins away. God is not ticked off. God is not angry with you. He is not your enemy. And you need to see who this true enemy is. And actually, if you, if you go to goodnewsforbrokenhearts.com, uh, <coughs> you'll find out <coughs> this, um, this, this, um, this spring, I had some teaching about um, uh, about sin and <clears throat> and I'm, I'm talking there about so I, I'm not going to go deep into that go to uh, goodnewsforbrokenhearts.com and, and get this teaching uh, <clears throat> uh, so I'm not going to go too deep into that but for sure we need to know who our true enemy is and we need to know that God is not your enemy 
when you have done a sin, when you have fallen, when you have done something stupid, God is still not your enemy. God is still not, even, even people that are not Christian, God is not their enemy either. Remember that. God doesn't look at them as their, uh, God's enemy. Yeah, maybe they're doing wrong things, maybe they're doing bad things. But they are not the enemy of God. We need to see who is the enemy of God. And the Bible tells us in, uh, in uh, is it Ephesians, it's, it's Ephesians 6, is talking about that, that um, um, we are not fighting against, against flesh and blood. It means we don't fight people. People are not our enemy. And you need to know that too. You need to see that too. Your, your neighbor, maybe he has done something against you. Maybe he's a Muslim or Buddhist or, or, uh, or something and, and he's hostile against you. He doesn't like you. Maybe he has even done something to, to you. But remember, that person is not your enemy. Muslim is not your enemy. But there is a power behind Islam. It's a power behind every kind of religion. Even Christian religion, there is sometimes a power behind there's a religious spirit behind uh, all religion in many ways. That's why I hate religion. <laughs> I hate religion because it is a bad spirit <laughs> in many ways. Religion has a bad spirit. But religion is not people, but it's something behind. And a religious spirit, when I'm talking about a religious spirit, I'm talking about a spirit of pride, for instance. Uh, a spirit of uh, hostility uh, uh, about anger people like, like the Pharisees if you can you can read about the Pharisees in, in the Bible and their spirit it was not God's spirit that was working through them it was a spirit of religion and it was not God's spirit and we need to see who is a true enemy that there is a spirit world yes there is we need to, we, we need to know that as a Christian, we need to know that there is a spiritual reality out there. And we need to be, be aware of that. If you're not aware of that, we will easily get fooled. And, and, and even as Christians, we will sometimes get fooled. We get fooled about who God is, who our true enemy is. We believe that, that maybe Muslims are the, the, our enemies, but they're not. It's something that they represent is our enemy. It's a spirit that is, uh, is our enemy, but not the people. We need to separate those things. God loves the sinner, but he, lo he hates sin. Because sin destroy you. Sin will destroy you. If you, live, if you study in the Bible, even in, in, uh, in Genesis, in Genesis 4, 6, it's, it's talking about that, that it's talking about actually sin as a power. He's talking about that and the sin uh, crutches at the, at the door and it wants, wants to devour you. It wants to take power over you. I'm, I'm reading from a Norwegian Bible here. Uh, uh, but it says that you will, you will rule over it. You can rule over it, it says. But it, it, it's talking about like sin is like a power that wants to con come and control you. So sin is not you. You can be a part of, of its... Uh, it can be a part of you. It can be, it can be almost the nature of you. That you are truly not sin. There is a power behind sin. And when you see that, it will be easier to love people too. Jesus told us that we should love our, our, our enemies. And it's easier to love the people who hurt us if you see that our true enemy is not the people, but something they represent. We are not fighting against flesh and blood, but there is a spiritual world we are fighting against. And it's a spiritual world that the, the God has already overcome. He has already overcome this spiritual world. And there's nothing you need to be afraid of. You just, just need to be aware of. You need to be aware of who you are. You need to be aware of you are more than conqueror. You are not a victim, you are a victor. That's the thing you need to, to, to understand. That's the thing that you need to see. You are not a victim, victim. you are a victor. And you need to see that you, you yourself too are not your enemy. Many people are afraid of themselves and believe that they themselves are their worst enemy. 
But can I tell you a truth? Can I tell you some good news? You are not your own enemy. The enemy is not yourself. And it's not other people, but it is a power. It's the power called, it's a, one power is called sin. That's one power. And, and for sure we have a, a, a the, Bi the Bible is telling us there is an enemy called the devil. <laughs> It's very clearly that we have an enemy called the devil and and he wants to 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 devour you he wants to 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 make you sin he, he wants to you to make your uh, your life bad for you he doesn't want you to have victory he doesn't want you to 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 have victory over sickness he don't want want you to have victory over your your thought life maybe the, there is addictions that you are struggling with the enemy doesn't want you to have victory over it. But if you trust, put your trust in God and, and also see who you truly are, you can see that you are, you can overcome those things. You are a victor. You are not a victim anymore. You are not. And that's the truth about you. And you need to see that God loves you, no matter what. Yes, maybe I fall into a sin for many, many, many years or many, many times and you're thinking, can, can God forgive me? If you're thinking that, can I tell you a truth? Can I tell you a good news? He has already forgiven you. Remember the prodigal son. Remember that, that, uh, that story. I don't know if you have been Christian for a while, you probably know the story about the prodigal son. The son that went away from his father's house, uh, he took half of his inheritance uh, and he, he kind of said to his father, you are dead to me. And, and he, he, uh, he, um, uh, he spent his money in a wrong way <laughs> and, uh, and in the end he, he didn't have any money left and, and had to feed pigs. Uh, and and, uh, and he, has, he, he did a lot of bad, bad things. <laughs> And then he remembered his fa father and he went back to his father's ha house. And, and this son has, has prepared a speech, you know, I was thinking, he was thinking, uh, when I come back to my father's house, I will tell him all the bad things. I'm sorry for all the bad things I've done and, and uh, I am not worthy to be your son. And, and just uh, if I can be, be become one of your servant instead, uh, that, that's good enough for me. And he has prepared this speech. But if you read the story, Luke, in Luke, Luke 15, you will see that the father had had no commands to his son. He, did, he didn't say that, okay, you're coming back now. First of all, you need to repent. Second, you need to repentance for what you've done. You, have, you need to really show yourself. You really need to, to have regret for what you have, have done now. And if you regret hard enough, I will maybe forgive you. And, and if you have gone some time, maybe I will, I, I will, I will um, bring you back as my son. Maybe I will call you my son again. Or maybe, maybe I will do you, make you as my servant or something like that. The father didn't have any command. He didn't have any conditions for his sons. He was just happy that the son came back to him. He was just happy. He kissed him. He, he had a party for him. He loved him. He didn't have any condition. He didn't condemn him. Read the story. He didn't say anything about the, all the bad stuff he had done. He didn't. <laughs> because the, the, the son also knew, you know, he came back. <laughs> and so, 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 he, so the father knew that he, has, he had gone through a hard time. And he didn't have to make uh, things harder for him <laughs> either. He knew that. He came home. He, the, other, the father was just happy that he came home. That, that, was to, um, that made his, his father's heart joyful. And it's possible to grieve the Holy Spirit. It's possible to grieve the father when you're going away. And for sure, if you read in Luke 2, sure the father was grieving. He had grief. When this, 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 this son was uh, going away from, from, uh, and doing all this bad stuff, the father was grieving. He was sad, sure. If, if, my, if my daughters would go out and do bad things, I will for sure grieve. <laughs> I will grieve that. 
And that's with the, with the Father, that's with the Holy Spirit too. It's possible to grieve the Holy Spirit. But it doesn't mean that he is angry with you. So just remember that God is not your enemy. Remember who your true enemy is. The enemy that your true enemy is sin and it's the evil one. <laughs> we, and his spirits, you know, he has evil spirits. And I believe part of it is sin. I think sin, the devil and his, his kingdom represent sin. Here then it represents what sin is. It's in darkness. Everything that is in darkness represent the, the kingdom of darkness and sin is a part of the kingdom of darkness it's not the part of the kingdom of light the kingdom of righteousness which we have, have become a part of you, you have been the bible tells us that you have, before you were living in darkness you were living in the dark uh, world in a way you were living in darkness but now you have been put into another kingdom the kingdom of his dear son in the kingdom of light you are not in the kingdom of darkness anymore and that's why you don't have to ha let, let the kingdom of darkness have power over you anymore you don't need, need to let your sin reign in your body anymore you don't need to put to to use your body as an instrument of unrighteousness anymore because you, your uh, your old man <laughs> died died with Christ and you have become a new man you have become a new you got a new man <laughs> And you died with, with Christ. In, in Romans he's talking about that. You died with Christ and you are raised up with him. And because you are raised up and have a new life with him. You have come, become into a new kingdom. You don't have to live in the kingdom of, of darkness. Some, some people they come into kingdom of light. But they're still thinking that they are in the kingdom of darkness. They still believe that they are sinners. That they, they, they cannot get uh, get rid of their, their sin problem or, or anything like that. And... And, and they're living in a life of defeat. But God has not put us in the, in the kingdom of defeat. He has put us in the kingdom of victory. A kingdom with his, his, his son. That one victory, once and for all, over your sin, over your sickness, over everything that, that, that's, that is a problem in your life, he overcome it. And yes, through life we will have troubles. Just, just before Jesus went up to heaven, uh, he said this in this world you will have trouble but be of good share because I have overcome this world <laughs> that's the good news he has overcome this world yes we will trouble in this world we sickness can meet us problems can meet us we can fall into sin yes still even if you are a, a new creation even if you are a uh, um, uh, have become a, a, a Christian you can still fall into sin it's possible but that's not your nature anymore that is not who you are it's not your identity it's not who you are and sin is not your identity remember that sin is not your identity it's not your nature there's nothing in you that is sin anymore yes you can have a stinking thinking <laughs> you can think the wrong way and you can follow the flesh um, and by the way you're thinking but you're not in the flesh anymore if you read in the right translations in the Bible in Romans 8 he's talking about being in the flesh and follow after the flesh and some people I don't understand Romans 8 very well I I was one of them I was reading Romans 8 for maybe a year and I was asking God give me a revelation about Romans 8 I want to, to understand Romans 8 and and one day uh, I used kind of different translation and one day God gave me a, a really an answer a, a huge answer and someday I will maybe really share it with you and I really want people to, to, to get hold of it too but part of it it is that it says that the thing that I'm struggling with was that it's talking about uh, that um, those who are in the flesh cannot please God and those who are in the flesh uh, is, is talking about that that they, they, they don't belong in God if you are in the flesh you don't belong to God and some translation has, has translated it to if you are in the sin nature or something like that but it's actually talking about the flesh uh, and uh, and that word you need to study by yourself too but um, but but it says that um, if you are in the flesh 
you cannot please God, you are not uh, pleasing to God, you are not belong to God, you are not a Christian anymore. And I was taught that uh, sometimes we can be in the flesh. And I was afraid of that, uh, maybe I'm falling in and out of salvation every time I fall into a sin. Because if I fall into a sin, I am in the flesh. Many being a Christian believe that, think that. And I was one of them who believed and think, uh, I was thinking that. And some translation I've tried to kind of translate it in a different way so that it kind of sounds nicer in a way. But if you go to the, to the original Greek, uh, you will see that it's talking about the flesh and in the flesh. So if, if, if it means that you, you fall into a sin and that you are in, in the flesh when you fall into a sin, you are not a Christian anymore. And I struggling, struggled with that scripture, and maybe you do too. Because I, then I was thinking, uh, maybe I'm myself is my enemy. You get into this fight that maybe you are half evil, half good. And I need to try to follow the good side, and, and the other part is, is my enemy. So I was myself my own enemy. And I was a person who struggled a lot with that, with this thinking, with this, this theology even. That we are half, half good, half, half, half uh, evil. <laughs> I struggle a lot with that. But when I started to understand that I got a new nature, I'm not in the flesh. It's not possible for me to be, as a Christian, it's not possible for me to be in the flesh anymore. The flesh is crucified, it says. In Galatians it says, to, it says that. Those who have belongs to God have crucified its flesh and its passions and its, its desires. He has crucified it already. It's dead already. It's not there anymore. But why do you still sin? That's, that's the dilemma, that's the, that's the question sometimes, or often. Why do I still sin? And it's, it's an easy answer to that too. Because you can follow the flesh by your thinking. You can have a fleshly thinking. But it's not your nature, it's not your, your identity. And that's very important to know. It's not your nature, it's not your identity. It's a way of thinking. And what do I do if it's just a, a way of thinking? I can renew my mind. And if you go to Romans 12, it's actually very easy. It's a, a simple in a way, if you see it in this way. In Romans 12, it's talking about renewing of the mind. So we can judge what's, what is the will of God. He's talking about don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's the whole thing. You need to still, as a Christian, as a new creation, uh, as, a, uh, as, yeah, as a new creation, you still need to renew your mind. And that's, that is what it's all about. As a Christian, it's not about trying to crucify yourself. It's not trying to, to be crucified again. And again and again and again every Sunday, go in, uh, go to when you go to church, you go to uh, be prayed for every Sunday, uh, because and because you need to get this uh, this uh, uh, nature crucified again, the flesh crucified again. No, you don't need to do that. It's already crucified. You just need to renew your mind. And yeah, repentance is still a part of it too. But also know this: repentance is not maybe not what you believe it is. Repentance is not trying to, to feel sorry for your sins and, and, and trying to do better. It's also about renewing your mind. Change your mind. Change your way of thinking. You've been thinking wrong. Change your way of thinking. Change your mind. That is what the repentance also is about. Change your mind. And that's good news. So uh, that was one, what I wanted to share for you today. And remember to go to my website called goodnewsforbrokenhearts.com. I also have a, have a, a, a YouTube channel, uh, so feel free to subscribe to that. I have some both in, in English, but I also have in Norwegian. Uh, so sometimes it will come some in Norwegian and some in English. And even in Shan, I, I, I'm speaking another language called the Shan people, Shan, because I'm working about among the Shan people. My wife is, uh, is from, from the Shan people too. Uh, so I speak Shan at home. Uh, so um, I'm a Norwegian, speaking Norwegian. Uh, and at, at home I speak in Shan, but I also speak English. So I have some teaching for you in English. 
and I also have some teaching in Norwegian and also in Shan. Uh, but mainly I have it actually in Norwegian. I have a lot of teaching in Norwegian. So if you understand Norwegian, feel free to go to my website bibelundervisning.com and you can find a lot of teaching there about this subject and also other subjects. So feel free to do that. Okay, that, that is what I had for you today. Also feel free to, if you want to don donate something to us, uh, we are in need of, of uh, financial, uh, yeah, um, we need that too, <laughs> uh, support, uh, financial support too. So, uh, so feel free to donate something to us. Go to Good News for Broken Hearts and you can use PayPal. So feel free to do that. Okay, that what, what was I had, what, was, uh, that was what I had for you today. So I will just want to say have a blessed day and God bless you.